Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah, dear viewers, welcome to another uh, Just Ask Islam show on Guide Us TV. Um, tonight, inshallah, we will be receiving your questions uh, on the phone. You have the numbers, and uh, uh, whatever questions that you may have, uh, please send them over. I do have some questions from uh, before, and uh, I will probably start with them and wait for your questions, inshallah, your live questions. Uh, the first question that I have here is um, is about uh, giving money to a non-Muslim. It says, must we give money to a non-Muslim uh, beggar if we suspect he will uh, use it to buy something haram? Uh, whether he is Muslim or not, non-Muslim, if you suspect that he will buy something haram, uh, it depends on what you mean by suspect. Uh, if he, if you're, you know, very confident that he will buy something haram, then you should not give him money, but you could give him in-kind donations uh, to to help him out. But if someone, if you're sure that someone will take this very money and use it to buy something haram, uh, then you should not. But suspecting, just a, by, you know, a matter of conjecture, uh, should not be enough uh, to say no. Uh, so I, uh, if, if it is not a matter of certainty, if you're not sure that they'll buy something haram, then you could give them the money. Uh, but if you're uh, almost sure they're, they're buying something haram with it, you give them in-kind donations. Let me uh, get this. Uh, yes, brother or sister. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, uh, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I guess someone is having difficulty here with the phones. Okay, maybe well, uh, wait for we'll wait for you until to call back. Uh, so like I said, if you know, we don't base actions as Muslims, we don't base actions on conjecture. Then, you know, we base actions on certainty or uh, the greater uh, likelihood or propensity. Let's, let's take this question. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, how are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Before we start, can I have... Where are you calling from, now? brother? Which uh, which uh, state or country are you call, calling from? I'm calling from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia, okay, very good. So, yeah, yes, Effie, what's your question? Yeah, before I ask my question, can I have your personal phone? Because there are some questions I want to ask you off the line. Up the air, actually. Uh, the the e email guidance TV and then they they will give it to you, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Okay, okay. My question today is uh, concerning somebody working with uh, airline as a cabin crew, those who serve the passengers in the in the in the in the airline in the aircraft. Yes. You know, they serve, you know, they have some part of their work is to serve some alcohol and uh, pork. So that's what I want to know. Is it uh, okay for a Muslim to work in that uh, position? Okay, that's one. If it's good or bad, if the, if it's bad and somebody working there and give you a, a body part, that's ticket. 
as a Muslim, will you accept it? So that's my If someone question. is if someone is what? Is working? Working yeah, with, with airline as a cabin crew. Yes. No, you know, you know, let's get, get, you know, okay, so uh, let's get the first question out of the way. No, it is not permissible okay. for a Muslim, it's not permissible for a Muslim to serve uh, wine. Yes. Yes, it is not permissible for a Muslim to serve wine. Okay, so which means it's, it's not good to work there. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's okay, so now if somebody is working there, Yes. and... Uh, then give you a, a, a ticket as a Muslim, uh, will you accept it? Oh, they, they just give you uh, like a voucher for something to drink or like a, like a, a ticket? Like a, oh, like a, like a, the like every a, year they give them a body pass to give to uh, family and friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you, you certainly could accept it because, you know, the, the, you know, this gift is from someone whose money is mixed, is not purely haram, even if the money was purely haram. Uh, it is uh, likely that the money, you know, likely that it will be halal for you if it reaches you through uh, a halal uh, transfer. So if the money, if I acquire the money from haram, it's haram for me. Then if I give it to you through sale or a gift or something of that nature, then it is halal for uh, the second recipient, since it reached him through halal means. Now, it, oh. will be, it will be certainly more cautious and purer that if someone has pure the haram income, uh, that, you avoid, oh. that you avoid their gifts, unless the avoidance of the gift will cause more problems, will cause fitna, will cause friction between family oh. members, and bigger problems. But if you know that some person, uh, for instance, is only involved in selling liquor or tobacco or something that is not halal uh, to sell, and y you know you don't think that by turning, uh, you know, uh, the, the, by uh, refusing to the gift that you will cause a greater fitna, then it will be pure and more, you know, you know, pious that you don't accept that type of gift from uh, that person. However, uh, someone who works as a cabin crew, you know, his, his income is a little bit uh, tainted, uh, but yeah. most of the work that he does for which he receives his income is not haram. Most of the work that he does is not haram. Yes. So that's, that's, that's the reason why I asked the question, because one makes sure uh, it's something like this. If somebody has a, because they give body parts at the end, uh, every anniversary they give them this body parts, so that they give family and friends. So that's uh, the reason why I want to make sure that uh, we are in the right way. No, it would be, uh, it would be okay, brother, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next one is, uh, Concerning uh, Muslims, what will constitute somebody, a Muslim, not to pray in another masjid? For instance, if uh, uh, what will constitute, what I try to say is like uh, the, now, nowadays everything is bigger, 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 bigger. So, will somebody uh, will come and say this masjid they're doing bigger, so I'm not going to pray uh, in that masjid? Or what? How can somebody come out and say and say that I'm not going to pray in this message because this is what they are doing and that is is by this is bitter, this is bitter. How can somebody come out and say that? What uh, everybody can do that, or have to be a scholar who can identify and say, okay, this message they're doing something which doesn't is not uh, according to his, uh, the dean. So praying that message will jeopardize your prayer, so therefore don't pray that, or any lame man person can say that. Okay, if it is a, if it is a clear-cut bid'ah known to everybody to be a bid'ah, then okay, the, the, the lay, lay, a lay instance, person... Like uh, uh, Just, uh, yeah, let me finish. Those celebrating uh, Maulid Nabi, the birth of Rasulullah Sallam. No, that... that now we have most of the 
uh, people pre- uh, doing that. So Th- that will not, like that. That will certainly not justify abandonment of that masjid, uh, because that no. is that is an issue where where uh, we believe that celebrating it is a bid'ah, but there is controversy no. between the scholars. Uh, so, okay. so my position is my position from my viewpoint, and I can uh, basically uh, voice my position, but I would have to respect that the issue as is a matter of disagreement between the scholars. So wow. those, those who do this, thinking that it is good, I will tell them my viewpoint is that uh, we should not celebrate anything except for the two Aids, and had it been good, the Sahaba would have beat us to it, the Tabi'un would have beat us to it, third generation would have no. beat us to it, since they did not, then I don't no. believe that it is uh, of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the way of the uh, companions and their followers. But, uh, but at the same time, it's an issue of controversy between the scholars, so it, no. this would not constitute a justification for the abandonment of any masjid at all, at all. Okay. Not even bigger than this, so, you know. So if it is a clear cut. Okay. So what about the? Te- what about me, the my, that's the, because, the, because I, I have, I, yeah, brother. So just w- one second. Uh, let, let me wrap up with okay. you so that I could take the other call here. That if it is a clear cut okay. bid'ah that you know is a bid'ah, then yes. If it is not a clear-cut uh, bid'ah, or uh, people have doubts, it's not something that is clear and obvious for the lay person, then you wait for a scholar uh, before you proceed okay. with uh, leaving the, that particular masjid. Uh, because, no. you know, abandonment of a masjid is not, is not an easy thing to, to do. Now, if, you, if there are two masjid near you, and you believe that one of them is, is more adherent to the sunnah, well, pray in the one that you believe to be more adherent uh, to the sunnah. And uh, I will hang up with you and take another question from some other co- caller, and inshallah you could uh, you could call back, inshallah. All right. Zakallah okay. khairan. Uh, would you give me the number? Uh, Guidance TV. If you call Guidance TV, uh, they'll give it to you, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. 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 Salam alaikum. Yes, sister. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Yes. Okay. Please uh, go ahead. You're you're calling from the U.S. or from outside? Are, are you, which state are you calling from? I'm calling from Columbus, Ohio. Oh, that's nice. Huh? That's nice, mashallah. Go ahead, ask your question. My question is, what is What is what? Is Iman? Yeah. What is Iman? Like uh, I M A N. What is E man? E man, I M A N. No, what is E man? What is E man? E man is is to have faith, is to believe in yes. a yes. So, okay. So E man is to have faith to believe in. Allah and to believe in the pillars, the pillars, the six pillars of faith in Islam, which is an tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rusulih wa liyawm al-akhir wa al-qadar khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala. To believe in Allah, His angels, His books, messengers, uh, the final day, and to believe in predestination, in qadar, qada and qadar. Uh, the divine decree, predestination, that everything is is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and decreed uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, that's Iman. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Is it clear, brother? Is it clear? What? You want to learn the Quran? Yeah. Okay. May, may, may Allah give you tawfiq. May Allah help you out. And may Allah make it easy for you. And may Allah facilitate the learning and memorization of the Quran for you. And make you a hafiz. Inshallah. Okay. All right. Salaam alaikum, brother. Mm. Yes, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. Okay. I, try, I didn't get anybody to give me the number. I'm sorry? Oh. Can you, yeah, I want no, if, 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 if you just. Uh, somebody can, can, can you can you call after the pro, the show after the program and oh after the program yes what so, number should I call after the program the same number that you called brother okay thank yes. you alaikum so, alaikum yeah we you too salam alaikum salam alaikum salam alaikum Okay, um, well, n now we will have a little bit of time to answer some questions. Inshallah, you could call uh, with uh, whatever questions you have. Uh, I have a question here, uh, and it's about hunting as a sport without eating the meat. Is it permissible? Hunting as a sport without eating the meat, is it permissible? <laughs> We'd all like to have the reward of someone entering into Islam, but we can't always be there. You can't always travel around with me, and I wish you could, but there is something you can do, and it travels around with you. That's to download the apps, and then you can support your favorite project. Yes, we do have the many websites, over 2,400. We have the free Quran and the CDs, the mail-outs of the Quran and the CDs. Also, the pamphlets and, of course, our internet website and our satellite television and now the antennas. All of these things are available. We're making it free for everybody, and you can help me do that. You can support. You can support this project. It's called Donate for Islam. That's the name of it. And you can go to that website right there. See it? Donateforislam.com. Support. Maybe you'd like to support the television channel. See the camera right there, right? Okay. So you'd click on that, and it will ex tell you how you can support by the minute. Whether it's an hour, half an hour, 15 minutes, support that. And you'll get the reward for all those who are watching it during that time thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of people watching our programs, watching our channel, and coming to Islam. And you can be part of it. Join me, won't you, on DonateForIslam.com. Ya Hamil Al-Qur'an Qad khassaka Ar-Rahman Bil-Fadli Wa-Tijan Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah uh, Welcome back uh, I do have a caller on the phone here Yes, Afi, go ahead uh, Go ahead, brother, with your question uh, Yes, I yes. would like to know how do one become a how do you how could you become a Muslim? Oh, mashallah, that's great. That's excellent. Well, it 
you become a Muslim by you know uh, testifying that there is no God but Allah, one God, Allah, and that Muhammad is his last messenger. So that's that's how you become a Muslim. You say, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his last messenger. Are you interested in becoming a Muslim? Yes, I am. Oh, mashallah, that's great. That's good news. So, do you, are you ready to to uh, to make the proclamation of faith now? Yes, I am. Oh, that's so sweet, mashallah. That's excellent. That's the the best call we got tonight. Uh, you know, the best call we got since the beginning of the program, I guess. So uh, you just say, Afi, uh, brother, Afi means bro brother. So you say, I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his last messenger. And Muhammad is his last messenger. Okay, and, and I will say it in Arabic. Now you're a Muslim, but I'll say it in Arabic just for the blessings of saying this. Shahada, I will say it in Arabic and you repeat after me. So you will say, Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna, Anna. Muhammadan, Muhammadan. Rasul, Rasul. Allah, Allah. MashaAllah. Congratulations, brother. If you were around, they would have given you a hug. But <laughs> you know, I'm I'm giving you like a hug over the phone now. Uh, and and please uh, call call the same number back and ask them to give you my contact information for any further questions. Uh, if you call this the same number back after the program, they will give you my contact information, uh, my email, and my phone number uh, if you have any further questions. Uh, which state are you calling from? Ohio. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio. That's great. That's excellent. And um, oh, the uh, and l l let me tell you, uh, my you know if my name shows my my uh, website is d r h a t e m a l h a j dot com, and certainly you could go to Guide Us TV, and there will be um, various uh, websites. Uh, also, you could go to. Just Ask Islam on Facebook, this program. You could go to Guide Us TV um, and you could get uh, you know, a lot of resources uh, from uh, their website. Uh, so p please stay in touch. Um, call them for my contact information and I will be very, very glad to receive any questions from you, brother. Okay. Do you have any questions now before we hang up? No, not at the moment. Uh, excellent. Congratulations one more time. And please identify the closest master to you and uh, go visit them as soon as you can. Okay. All right. Salaam alaikum. Okay. Okay. Uh, Salaam alaikum. Hey, Mr. Yes, Afi, go ahead. Um, my name is Megan Masala. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Is it permissible to cut off your emergency? Is it haram or halal to cut off your emergency? Is it permissible to do what? To cut off your emergency. Oh, okay. Uh, so extraction of the wisdom teeth is permissible if there is a need for this. You know, it is not, you know, if if it's not bothering you, uh, then no one, you know, no sensible person will be just uh, extracting their teeth for no uh, purpose. But uh, you know, probably 
it is bothering you in some way, then if it is bothering you in some way, then you take it out. Oh, or, or okay. if you, if your physician, if your if the dentist advises you to take it out, because he's he's uh, basically he thinks that it will cause problems to your other teeth or uh, or so, so, some other potential problem, then you, you take it out for this purpose. So for a good but purpose, not. for a good purpose, for a medical indication, it is permissible to take out your wisdom teeth. You're very welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, it seems that we are, we're going to love calls from Columbus, Ohio. That's good. So greetings to the uh, brothers and sisters out there in Ohio. Uh, we before before we got uh, those questions, we uh, I think we were trying to address this. Uh, question that I got per before the show about hunting as a sport without eating the meat is it permissible uh, if you if you will not be using the meat if you will not be eating the meat or selling uh, for you know profit to someone who would eat it uh, then then hunting as a sport would be a cause for the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet وسلم, said, May Allah curse the one who takes a living creature as a target for play. As a target for play. The Prophet وسلم, also told us that the bird will go up to the Lord on the Day of Judgment and complain, or will go up to the ascent of the Lord and complain uh, about someone who uh, killed it and uh, did not eat it. Uh, so the bird will say, فَلَا هُوَ أَكَلَانِي He neither ate me, وَلَا تَرَكَنِي أَسْعَى فِي خُشَارَاتِهَا And he did not uh, leave me to roam the uninhabited places of the earth. So, you know, I did, I did not encroach on his room or his space. Uh, he did not let me live. And he did not use me for food, but he killed me. So to, to that extent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to the complaint of that little small living creature that has been uh, murdered, killed, you know, here it's, it's you know, okay, pur purposeless killing uh, would, would certainly uh, be uh, sinful. Like I said, the Prophet sallallahu considered that to be an enormity. Because when, when la'an, which is cursing, is associated with a sin, that sin is a kabira or enormity. So taking a living creature as a target for play is an enormity, a kabira, a great sin, a grave sin. Yes, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome to the uh, to Just Ask Islam, brother. Okay. Where are you calling from, uh, brother? From Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, that's that's good. That's the second call today from Georgia. It's good. Yes. Oh. Uh, my my question for this is about this. Uh, uh, what can you say about this Tariqa Tijaniya and this Tariqa Kadiria? Uh, the, those who are doing the practice. So what can, what can you tell us about those practice? And can somebody pray in that masjid with those who are doing that? That's what I, I need to know about those uh, practices. In general, brother, the uh, tariqa that we should all follow is the tariqa al muhammadiyya the tariqa of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the messenger of Allah. Uh, we don't believe that uh, uh, in uh, tariqas uh, as a disciplined order, as a disciplined order, we believe, you know, Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani was a great Sheikh, was a Sheikh of the interior and the exterior. He was a faqih, knowledgeable uh, scholar, 
and was also had also insight uh, in the matters of the interior, the heart, and the purification of the soul. So we could certainly benefit from Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani's, uh, you know, teachings. Uh, but it, we, we don't have to be dedicated to his tariqah versus the tariqah of some other scholar uh, who may also have great benefits for us if we learn from him. Ultimately, the tariqah of Muhammad وسلم, is our tariqah and anyone who guides us to the tariqah of Muhammad وسلم, uh, we will listen to him as long as he's guiding us to the tariqah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, there is a difference in this case between this and the madhabs, the fiqhi madhabs, because fiqh, ma rulings and things of that nature, uh, these are uh, basically uh, schools of law, and you do need the, uh, someone to interpret the uh, 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 Quran and the Sunnah for you to basically uh, give you the implications of the Quran and the Sunnah and derive the rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah. So you have these schools of law. Those schools of law are recommended for the student of knowledge to learn. The student of knowledge who will be a faqih, a mufti, a qadi, uh, will learn first according to one of the schools and then expand from there. Uh, for the public, the public will follow the scholars that they just follow. And those scholars may be, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hanafi inclined, Shafi inclined, Hanbali inclined, Maliki inclined. Uh, but uh, for, for the public, you will follow your, your scholar and you do need to have uh, to, to basically uh, identify yourself with scholars that have, you know, piety and knowledge. Have knowledge based in the revelation, the Quran and the Sunnah, and uh, piety. Uh, so, like I said, you know, the tariqah of Muhammad Sallallahu is our tariqah, and we listen to the uh, teachings of the scholars who guide us on the basis of the Quran and Sunnah to the tariqah of Muhammad Sallallahu And every scholar. You know, like Imam Malik said, كُلٌّ يُؤْخَذْ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ وَيُرَدُ أو كُلٌّ يُؤْخَذْ مِنْهُ وَيُرَدُ عَلَيْهِ Everyone, uh, everyone's statements uh, or everyone, uh, ha, um, uh, everyone's statements are subject to acceptance or rejection except for uh, the dweller of that grave, and he pointed to the grave of the Prophet So this is how we should think. We respect our scholars, we revere our scholars. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani is one of the great scholars. We revere them, we respect them. Uh, but again, ultimately, the only infallible being is Muhammad Sallallahu Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah. No one has been inspired but him. No one is infallible in, of, of this ummah uh, but him. And certainly uh, the infallibles in the history uh, are the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Can I, can, brother, can you, okay, I will, I will, I will, brother, I will take one question from every caller. And then uh, you yeah, can call it's back not later in so What you said, I want to, I want you to to, uh, to explain it so that uh, we we'll understand it better. That's what I'm saying. That like uh, the, the the Tijania, where they are practicing it, and everywhere where you live is that's what they are doing. So now, can what can you play in that message with them? That's the main question. Because the idea, the what they t what they are doing. They are followers of Malik, but they have this tariqa which is called Tijaniya. So, in that message, can you pray with them? That's the main question. Okay. What, what, what is it that they do in that, 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 would, uh, that would concern you? Like, it, what, when you enter the masjid, what is it that they do? Uh -huh. like, uh, what is it? Yes. Okay. They sit uh, they sit around in the masjid 
and do istighfar. Sit around in the masjid and do istighfar, that would, that would not be... Istighfar and they do Salat al fati I think the question is uh, the Salat al fati and Jaharat al-Kamal, these two. Okay, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let, let me tell you this, brother. Uh, uh, basically, okay. in, in, a, in a book called Al Bayan wa Tahseel by Al Imam Malik himself, by, I'm sorry, not in a Maliki book called Al Bayan wa Tahseel by Ibn Rushd, a great no. Maliki scholar, Ibn Rushd reports no. from Al Imam Malik himself that he was asked, Imam Malik, uh, he was no. asked this question. They, they told them, uh, I, I may have to, to you know, uh, finish uh, finish off the answer after the break. Uh, but let me tell you this. So they asked Imam Malik about collective du'a on the day of Arafah. They asked Imam Malik about doing du'a collectively in the masjid, in a group in the masjid, collectively on the day of Arafah. You know, we know that Arafah is, you know, one of the greatest uh, days and dua it will be accepted inshallah but let me yeah. tell you after the break what imam ya hamil al quran qad khassak ar rahman My name is Abu Hafsa Abdul Malik Claire, and if you don't know, you should know. You're watching Guide Us TV. But guess what? Guide Us TV is available on your phones now. It's available on your iPhone, on your iPod, on your iPad, on your Android, all over the smartphones. It is available on your App Store or your Play Store. It is F R W E free. Go there, download it, install it, play it, enjoy it, and share it. And remember, get guided with Guide Us TV. Now available on your app store, Guide Us TV. Go to your app store today, search for Guide Us TV, download and enjoy. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I have this question. Uh, okay. Uh, so I was talking about Imam Malik being asked about making dua collectively together, as Ibn Rushd, uh, you know, reported from him in uh, his book Al Bayan wa Tahseel. And Imam Malik s said, don't make the dua with them if they're making the dua collectively. And uh, well, strange because Arafah, you know, the dua is likely to be accepted. This is the masjid and so on. However, it, this constellation of, you know, uh, conditions, circumstances, uh, has not been reported the, from the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions that they sat down after us on the day of Arafah in the masjid to collectively make dua. But if you do it randomly, if you do it on your own, if you're doing it at home, then it is fine. So he asked Imam Malik, so what if he goes to the masjid and they, they are doing the dark collectively, so he does it with them? Uh, he said, no, he should not do it. So they asked him, what if he just gets embarrassed into it? And he said he, said he should stay at home. This is how much aversion Imam Malik had to bid'ah, introducing anything new in the deen, even a variation of form, uh, number, you know, uh, uh, place, uh, time, etc., uh, to a to, to an act of worship. Uh, we do need to uh, practice our deen in an evidence-based manner. So everything should be from the Prophet because he's the only one who communicated the truth from Allah. He is the only one who knows what Allah likes and what Allah uh, does not like. There is also 
a report, Abu Naim al-Hiriya in his book al-Hiriya reported from Imam Malik himself one more time, uh, since you're talking about Malikis, uh, the, from Imam Malik himself that uh, a man approached him and said, where should I start my ihram? And he said to him, من ذي الحليفة, من حيث أحرم رسول الله, from ذي الحليفة, from where the Prophet started his ihram for Hajj, when you put on, you know, make the intention for Hajj, and you put on your garment for Hajj, and so, so on. And uh, the man said to Imam Malik, I would like to make it from the masjid. Uh, so basically earlier, before the Hulayfa. And Imam Malik said to him, I fear fitna for you. Don't do it. I fear fitna for you. I, I fear, you know, misguidance uh, for you. And he said to him, what misguidance if I am only adding to my ihram? I am not subtracting. I am not taking out anything. I am adding a, a few miles to my ihram. Uh, so I'm doing better, I'm doing more. So Imam Malik said to him, what fitna is greater than to think that you beat the Prophet to something better? That you did something better than the Prophet greater than what the Prophet did? So we comply by that which was transmitted to us from the Prophet We don't need to add. Can we really do everything the Prophet used to do and his companions? If you have 24 hours of, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, free time a day, 24 hours of free time a day, and you busy yourself with doing the things that the Prophet and his companions used to do, you're not going to have enough time. So just do whatever you were told to do whatever has been transmitted clearly from the Prophet and his companions without modifications, without, you know, uh, variations, the very exact thing they did. Don't add to it a different form, different number, different time, different place, different anything. And that is the tariqah of Muhammad Wasallam. It is the best tariqah. He has the most balanced and most precise equation to get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The azkar of the Prophet ﷺ that he uttered are so precise and to the point and this is basically, this is like medicine. You need to be, the, you know, so precise in adding the different uh, chemicals so that the medicine works well for you and treats you from the disease, does not cause you more harm. So the azkar of the Prophet ﷺ are the medicine of the heart. Use them exactly like you received them from the Prophet ﷺ. Don't make up your, your own. Uh, the best guidance is his guidance. The best speech is his speech. The best teachings are his teachings. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Afi, go ahead. Um, hello, my name is Mazen. I'm from Ohio. I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Afi. Um, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us if we wanted to worship Him? Why did? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us if we wanted to worship Him? Why did Allah create us to worship yes. Him? So you're, you're not asking if Allah created us to worship Him. You know that Allah created us to worship Him, but you're asking why did He create us to worship Him? Yeah, why did Allah create us to worship Him? Allah created us to worship Him because Allah wanted us to eventually earn paradise. Allah wanted a creation that would worship Him to be deserving of uh, ultimate joy in paradise. But I, I, I will ask you a, a, an important question, brother, because also uh, we're, we're trying to get to it from the, the wrong way. Uh, you were created or not? Yes, yeah, all were created. Uh. Yeah, but you, you were created and you're here, right? Yes. Okay. So, someone created you, 
and the one who created you and you have identified that he is mm -hmm. the one who created you told you in his last message I created you to worship me that's the bottom line uh, because sometimes uh, philosophical questions uh, may not really be good for the soul, may not be really good for uh, certainty, may not be very good for one's belief. They could be used by the shaitan to distract us. We have to be practical and we know that we have been created, we know that God created us, and we know that no one told us that he created us except God who sent Abraham you know, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad والسلام, and before them messengers and, and so on. So this God told us that he created us uh, to worship him. No one else claimed to have created us but him. And he told us that he created us to worship him. So what we should be busy doing is doing what he told us that we were made for. Uh, because if we're not doing what he told us we, are we were made for, uh, then we did not fulfill our purpose of existence. It is like a refrigerator that is being used as a closet. That refrigerator basically has not, uh, you're not getting your money out of, uh, out of that refrigerator if you use it as a closet. Or you use it like, as a, like a cabinet to store stuff. It is it has been made to uh, keep the, the food uh, cool. So uh, the same applies to human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We are here. We are sure that we are here. And we're sure that someone made us because we couldn't have made ourselves. And we are sure that we were made for a purpose because we're purposeful creation. Someone gave us purpose. And the one who gave us purpose must be purposeful because one that is purposeless cannot give purpose to his creation. So the one who made us must be a purposeful creator. And the purposeful creator must have communicated to us the purpose of our creation. It's pretty straightforward. And we find that he communicated to hum humanity through messengers. And we find those messengers and the last one and with the last book, the, one, the book that has not been touched or changed, is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his book is the Quran and in this book we find Allah, we listen to Allah, we hear Allah say to us وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn and the ins but to worship me so we, we take it and then we uh, uh, act upon it and we worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and I'm not saying it is you know, it is, I am not saying that it is basically uh, misguidance to, to ask why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him but I am telling you do not if, if you if you could uh, uh, under comprehend it that's good if you cannot do not let the shaitan distract you by this tell the shaitan if he whispers to your, in your uh, head uh, such thoughts that I have been created, and I am here, so I have to do the work that I came here for, or that I was brought here for, which is the worship of God. But like I told you, Allah created us so that we could worship Him and become deserving of paradise with our actions. But Allah created the devil, but the devil didn't worship Allah. It was only a place at that time when Allah told us to bow down to Adam Absolutely. So Allah created different for creations so that some of them will make it eventually to eternal happiness in the Jannah and you know for it to, for there be a, their, uh, for, uh, for, for it to be uh, like uh, a test, uh, some, some people have to fail and some people have to uh, pass, right? That's the nature of tests. Or some creations have to fail and some creations uh, get to pass. Because it is a test. And the winners are the, the ones that will be destined to eternity in uh, paradise. 
So not all the creation was created to, to, to be destined to paradise, but the creation, the creation was created so that uh, the uh, winners, the uh, obedient ones, the believers uh, will make it to paradise for eternal uh, bliss. You're welcome, Barry. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Okay, well, remember the last question that we were talking about? The question about, you know, the, uh, you know, hunting uh, without wanting to eat. Um, without wanting to, to, to basically use the, the, that hunted game or bird uh, for food. And we said that this, this could make one deserve the curse of Allah SWT. It's an enormity, it's a great sin. There is a related question here, although it's not very, uh, it's not the same, but it is somewhat related. Uh, because gentleness, uh, to animals is part of Islam. Gentleness to any living creature is part of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Fi kulli dhati kabidin ratbatin sadaqa." There is charity in any kindness you do. There is the reward of charity uh, will apply to any act of kindness uh, that you do towards uh, or extend to any living creature. That kabid in ratba, the, the the creature with a moist liver, basically living creature. For every living creature, you get a the reward of charity if you treat them kindly or extend kindness to that living creature. So, a, a question that is related to this topic in general, uh, that you you may hear about. Uh, or you may be able to read about maybe online uh, because it's it's a, it's it's a matter that uh, makes a lot of people curious, which is boiling live lobster. If boiling live li lobster uh, is permissible, so what do you think? <laughs> uh, you may say it is not permissible because certainly if you boil a living creature alive. That's that's extremely cruel, doesn't it? Sounds very cruel. Uh, however, uh, people have done this in the past for centuries. Uh, is the and and many of the scientists say that the boiling live or a live lobster uh, alive does not cause them pain. They have, I think, they have done some scientific. Uh, testing and experimentation on this and they said that it does not cause them pain. The bottom line is as a uh, basically uh, okay as a mufti do I need to do I need to uh, uh, have the right answer to every scientific question? No. So what I will tell you is if it hurts the uh, animal, then it is not permissible. If it does not hurt, then it is permissible. And it is on you to figure out if it hurts or does not hurt. Because the principle here is that you should do kindness to every living creature. If you think that this is not kindness, don't do it. If you think that uh, there is no pain involved in this uh, process, then it may be permissible uh, for, for you uh, to do it. Uh, by this, we would have come to the end of the, our program. We'll see you next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.